My husband is playing D&D with some friends and told me to come look at the cat who is sitting in a chair like a person. My husband handed him a d20 and said, Sir, you have to roll a stealth check to convince the other party members you are a human. And the cat immediately batted the d20 and rolled a 14. The party cheered for him. The final human player joined the table and they brought out a whole extra chair so the cat could remain at the table. He's now the party's official druid and just canonically in wild shape all the time and therefore unable to speak common. DM, you see a warehouse in the distance. Player, is it like a werewolf, but instead of a wolf, they turn it to a house? It is now. We're stuck in an underwater dungeon with no exits. Come across a skeleton chained up in a jail cell. Warlock has a magic item with limited use, speak with dead. One question, how do we get out of here? How the f would I know? <laughs> Ants checks out. <laughs> a female dragonborn paladin with a noble background is the ultimate switch. She can be the knight, the princess, or the dragon, as circumstances require. <laughs> I'm imagining a scenario where, through a series of misunderstandings, she's hired to rescue herself from herself. Sir Elders of Mosley, the church has evidence to suggest that the Princess Miranda of Foxley has been kidnapped by Firefang the Ruthless. Will you rescue her on behalf of His Holiness? Sir Miranda's old days, born in Foxley, honorarily knighted in Mosley as a black knight after winning a jousting tournament, whose rebellious teenage nickname was Firefang. So, about all that. <laughs> The fewer words a magic sword's name has, the more dangerous it is. You don't want to be on the wrong end of Dark King Grutmore's Edge of Annihilation, don't get me wrong, but you for sure don't want to be on the wrong end of something called the Throngler. Dark King Grutmore's Edge of Annihilation implies other Dark Kings with other Edges of Annihilation, but there is only one way to get Throngled. <laughs> I can't say throngled with a straight face. Make a bear character in D&D 3.5. DM laughs. Make bear a rogue, put every point I can into disguise. Prestige class is a spy to get even more disguise. DM says I can't speak English, but I max out bluff. By growling and gesturing, I can fake speaking a language I don't speak. I use money to hire a butler NPC. I give him magical item to speak bear. Brr. An excellent suggestion. An excellent suggestion, Mr. Barrington. We really should ask the group to investigate the Black Marsh. Over the course of the game, be knighted as Sir Barrington. Queen holds a dinner in my honor. A guest becomes the first man to ever make a perception check that can beat my disguise. Shouts out loud, Hey! Hey, that guy's not a guy, he's just a bear! Man is escorted out of the castle while the guards apologize profusely for the indignity. We're so sorry, Mr. Barrington. Very sorry for this man's behavior. Roar, shrug. <laughs> Teaching a girl how D&D works. She makes a half-orc rogue. I am loving the concept. First fight starts. Okay, DM, I spray the enemy with water. What? You can't do that. Why not? Are they half orc -er? <laughs> I told them there was a flask full of deadly poison on a shelf. They laughed and asked how they knew it was poison. And I said, oh right, never mind then, just a flask. And one of them went and drank it. Many years ago, I ran a game where I pitted two groups against each other. Several members of group one came up with the idea of luring group two into a trap. You remember the hand of Vecna and the eye of Vecna that were artifacts in the old D&D world, where if you cut off your hand or your eye and replaced it with the hand of Vecna, you'd get awesome new powers. Well, group one thought up the head of Vecna. Group 1 spread rumors all over the countryside, even paying bards to spread the word about this artifact rumored to exist nearby. They even went so far as to get a real head and place it under some weak traps to help with the illusion. The druid in Group 1 heard about this new artifact and went off in search of it himself. I wasn't really worried since he was alone and I knew that there was no way he could cut his own head off. Alas, I was mistaken as the druid promptly summoned some carnivorous apes and instructed them to use his own scimitar to cut his head off and of course quickly replacing it with the head of Vecna. It's so dumb. Your party is forced into eating at a vegan lunch. 
what do. My dragonborn fighter looks at his plate with disdain. He decides to pick it up and throw it on the ground. He yells at the host, Do I look like a fucking iguana to you? Host falls, speechless. My party begins to glare at me. The bard pipes up with, I mean, kinda. <laughs> I used this once. The BBEG does his whole evil speech explaining why he wants to exterminate the elves, finishes up, and initiative is rolled. On my turn, I move my sorcerer over to the other side of the map. Guys, he's actually making sense. I, I think we should go with him. All the other players lose their shit. Tell me I'm off my rocker for siding with him. Sorry guys, I'm on the winning side here. Twin spell haste on the boss and his second in command. Boss's turn comes next and he charges in to attack everyone. I end my concentration. DM's mouth is hanging open wondering why the f I would do that. His turn ends, he and his buddy can't move or take actions until their next turn. We mop the floor with both of them. Now all bosses have plus 20 to their insight checks. 